G'day, Brenton here, VK2MEV. Um, this is going to be a demonstration video of my homebrew DSP, um, but using my voice as the input so you can really hear uh, how much of a difference it makes. Um, at the moment, this is just unprocessed, um, and the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is the filtering. Um, I'll use the third order filter uh, just so I can demonstrate a few things. Um, so let's turn the filter on. Okay, that's with the filter on. Um, at a 100 hertz cutoff, you might be able to hear a little bit of the, uh, the, the numerical rumble in the background when I stop talking. There's a little bit of rumble there. Um, I might as well just demonstrate the second order filter. Um, so I can just turn that off um, and enable the second order filter. Now that's with the second order filter on. There's going to be a little bit less numerical noise now. But uh, anyway, I'll stick with the third order um, because it uh, demonstrates the... Um, uh, the cutoff frequency more clearly. So let's just uh, wind this cutoff frequency up. So as I wind this up slowly, you'll hear the low frequencies die off. Now it's probably um, cutting off about the mid range, and when I wind it up all the way full scale, okay, that's currently cutting off at one kilohertz. Um, so let's just wind it back a little bit, and I'll just uh, I'll just leave that setting there for the rest of the video. Um, so the next thing I'll demonstrate is just the difference between second and third order filters uh, at this cutoff frequency. So I'll disable the filter, turn on the second order, and re-enable it. So that's with the second order filter. There's probably a little bit um, more bass there. So I'll just go back to the third order. Okay, that's the third order there. Um, hopefully there's a bit of difference there. Anyway, um, obviously this is something you'd, uh, you'd sort of listen to yourself talking and, uh, and adjust it uh, so it sounds uh, the way you want it to sound. But this is just a demo and I can't actually hear myself, so we'll just have to live with whatever the setting that is. Uh, the next thing is I can demonstrate the compression. Uh, so I'll turn, the, for demonstration purposes, I'll turn the compression level all the way up. Okay, so that's just maximized compression gain. So I'm allowing it to use as much gain as it needs to in order to um, make sure that the output volume is always full scale. Okay, so... Uh, the first thing we're going to do here is I'll just turn the gating off, I'll demonstrate that later, is when I stop talking, you can hear the noise floor come up there. Um, so I'm currently just uh, talking uh, hard up against the microphone, and um, if I move away a little bit, okay, that's currently talking about 15 centimetres away, you can hear that um, the volume is much the same, you can certainly see it on the waveform as well. If I turn the compression off, Okay, that's compression off from about 15 centimetres away and compression off hard up against the microphone. Um, and so you can see that if I, if I sort of lean back a little bit and you stop being able to hear me, I can turn the compressor on and the compressor will compensate for the fact that the input volume is now uh, softer. So that basically just means that um, uh, it's, the microphone technique is a lot more forgiving. Um, the next thing I can demonstrate is the compressor release time. If I turn, okay, at the moment the compressor release time is set to maximum. This is about two seconds. So if I just sort of uh, stop talking for a second, you can hear the noise, the background noise, um, come up slowly there. Um, but this is fully adjustable. I can turn that up a little bit faster. So there the, com the background noise is coming up quite rapidly. Um, if I turn it halfway between them, uh, check one, two. Yeah, you can hear the noise come up um, after about half a second or so. The other thing I can do is just turn it all the way up, and this is probably sounding pretty horrible, uh, but this is with an absolute maximized waveform. If I just zoom in on the waveform there, you can see my voice is just this horrible block of sound. I'd be very loud on the radio, uh, but it also isn't going to sound all that nice. So it's one of these compromised things. So I'll just turn the uh, release time up a little bit there. And uh, so this is a setting that's hopefully going to maintain a lot of the uh, natural sort of shaping on my voice uh, without um, distorting it all that much. Okay, the next thing I'll demonstrate, well, the last thing is the gating threshold. So this is basically just a squelch setting um, for, uh, for a microphone. If I just uh, go quiet and let the noise, the background noise, come up, um, and then I can turn the gating threshold up so that the background noise um, is completely attenuated. Okay, and you, you can probably heard it uh, completely go away there. So now I've set the gating threshold, so when I stop talking, the, um, the noise goes away. And it goes away after about half a second or so there. Um, and you can use this in conjunction with the, um, the release time in order to make the noise go away faster. So if I turn the release time 
all the way up. So that's with maximised release time. The um, sorry, minimised release time. Um, the the noise gating cuts in very very rapidly. And uh, we'll just turn the release time back up there so it sounds a bit more natural. So hopefully that's been informative. Uh, this is Brenton VK2 MEV. Thanks for watching.